Hello scientific people, how are you today? So today I am going to discuss about the resistances in series and the derivation is actually very simple but I would like to clarify few of the things over here like uh, the voltage drop etc. So let's start. Before starting this theory you must be aware about what is Ohm's law and we know that Ohm's law is applied for a given resistor or set of resistors at a constant temperature. So if you are sitting in an area where the temperature is continuously fluctuating, we cannot apply Ohm's law as the temperature has got effect on the resistance. So we are assuming that these three resistances which are connected in series are maintained at constant temperatures. We are assuming that these connecting wires which are joining all these resistors are having zero resistances this battery doesn't have any kind of internal resistance and now these three are voltmeters which are connected across the resistors always remember people voltage is equal to current multiplied by resistance that is ohms law so if the if the current coming out of the battery doesn't go through the voltmeter and it passes through this resistor then the product of this resistance and the current will be displayed over here but if I keep the resistance of the voltmeter less then most of the current will pass through this no current will pass through this so if the current doesn't pass through this then the product will not be displayed over here right so voltmeters are always connected in parallel and voltmeters are having very very high resistances so most of the current will pass through the uh, this uh, resistance and very negligible current passes through this one right okay so here we have a small cell and here we have two resistors so these are carbon resistors made up of carbon and as you can see that they have got color coding on it so depending on the color coding the resistances are decided so we are not going into much of the depths so if I want to connect them in series then I will do something like this the both the ends shall be connected in this way then the battery or the cell will be connected like this one end of this will be connected over here another end will be connected over here so our circuit is ready now we always know that the conventional current comes out from the positive terminal of the battery passes through the cell and the same current has to enter in the negative terminal of the battery correct okay and the electrons they move in the opposite direction they go from negative to positive now these are some points to remember and eventually we will discuss about all these points in detail one by one now as we have discussed that the voltmeters which are over here connected in parallel with each resistors they are having very high resistance theoretically extremely high resistance right infinite which is practically not possible but here we are just considering that they are having infinite resistance so no current will pass through all these voltmeters so whatever current comes out of the battery the same current has to pass through r1 the same current has to pass through r2 and r3 because there is no other way for the current to go so in series connection whatever current comes out say i current the same i current will pass through r1 r2 and r3 now people voltage drop is highest across the highest resistance see what do you mean by voltage drop suppose this battery is of 12 volts so let us assume that this battery is of 12 volts and say the current coming out is i right okay and this is say 1 ohm resistor this is 2 ohm resistor this is 3 ohm resistor so the voltage drop means this means people it can be written as 12 joule per second sorry 12 joule per coulomb because volt can be written as joule per coulomb I can also choose to write this as 1 coulomb because it is not going to matter so this means 1 coulomb charge takes 12 volt from the battery and then moves in the circuit and when it comes back its whole energy is lost 
while overcoming the resistances so when one coulomb charge comes out basically they are electrons so they will go out like this so one coulomb electrons they require some energy which they take from the battery so one coulomb electrons they take 12 joule energy from the battery and they go and they pass through this resistance then they pass through this resistance and finally it passes through this resistance when they are passing through the resistances they are going to lose the energy because just assume that this is a water wave and you are flowing against it so you are going to lose the energy so this resistance when the charge or the electrons when they pass through the resistance they lose some amount of energy which is called voltage drop so more the resistance more will be the energy lost more will be the voltage drop and how much voltage drop will be appearing over here that i will show you right people okay so now let's move on to the derivation and we have not considered the resistance of the wire so there will be no voltage drop in the wires so suppose out of 12 joules 8 joules is lost over here just an example 2 joules is lost over here and rest 2 joules is lost over here then the total sum will be equal to 12 joules there will not be any kind of drop in the energy or resistances in these wires okay so if i current passes through r1 then the voltage drop appearing over here will be v1 so just applying the ohm's law i current flowing through it so i times r1 will be displayed over here so v1 is equal to i times r1 in the same way same current passes through r2 so i into r2 will be displayed over here as v2 so v2 will be equal to i times r2 same current passes through r3 so i times r3 will be equal to v3 so v3 is equal to i times r3 now people the sum of all these will be equal to the battery voltage so let me add it up v1 plus v2 plus v3 that will be equal to i common r1 plus r2 plus r3 correct okay now what we are supposed to do is we are supposed to consider an equivalent circuit equivalent circuit means the same battery over here the same current must come out but you are replacing these three resistors with an equivalent resistance req so just imagine that i am removing all these three resistors but i am putting a single resistor in its place such that all other data they remain constant like the current coming out must remain constant so here if i record a voltage drop like this so i current is flowing in this way so i multiplied by rq will be displayed over here and the full voltage drop will be taking place across this resistor because there is no other resistor here the voltage drop of this plus this plus this will be equal to this but here only the voltage drop is occurring over here so that means let me call this as v only because the whole voltage drop will be occurring over here practically not possible people because wires should be having some resistance and the battery will be having some internal resistance but still since we have made this assumption the whole voltage drop appears over here so for this equivalent circuit i can write down v is equal to i times r eq now we know that v1 plus v2 plus v3 the sum of all these three is equal to the battery voltage so that means i am going to replace v1 plus v2 plus v3 by i times r eq so i times r eq that is equal to i r1 plus r2 plus r3 now striking i i from both sides what do i get is the following so i am getting the equivalent resistance r eq as r1 plus r2 plus r3 so that means this is our final answer for the equivalent resistance so let me highlight this part people this is a very important formula that we have derived and if you have more than say if we have six to seven resistances connected in series the sum of all resistance will be the equivalent resistance now let's quickly come back to this problem now since we know that this is 3 ohm 2 ohm and 
one ohm so the total resistance will be people 6 ohm so v is equal to ir so 12 voltage is equal to i current multiplied by 6 ohm so the current flowing will be 2 ampere so that means this current will be 2 ampere so 2 multiplied by 1 so v1 will be 2 volt then 2 multiplied by 2 will be 4 volt and 2 multiplied by 3 will be 6 volt so that means people the sum of all these three is equal to the battery voltage now what does this mean this means that when one coulomb electrons they go like this they take 12 joules of energy from the battery they lose 6 joules while crossing this resistor they lose another 4 and they lose another 2 finally they become 0 since there is no voltage drop over here they will again come back they will again take 12 joules they will again lose 6, 4, 2 and so on so hopefully people I have given you a very clear picture of this and you do watch the same um, resistances in parallel connection thank you for watching the video